Doesn't this crack bring back some memories? Yes, it oh, does. I heard they're making a second one, right? Didn't you hear that? They're making a Top Gun 2 and uh, I, Cruise is going to be in it? I think I did hear that. What is he going to be it. flying this time? <laughs> like a wheelchair? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what is he's that? Gonna he's going to have a turbo boost on his wheelchair. Right? Yeah. This guy's like a Mission Impossible 9, all right? <laughs> Your mission is over, bro, all right? Just go relax and... Uh, who's he with now? What's that tall chick's name is too tall for him? Uh, Katie Holmes? Holmes. Katie right, Holmes. she's yeah. like 17 years younger than he is, or maybe even more. Maybe more. Yeah, maybe more. Maybe 70 more. years? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's pretty old. We're not here to talk about Tom Cruise. I don't even know why we got into that. <laughs> Tom Cruise. But he made a lot of good movies. Thank you for your <laughs> did, risky business did. and your <laughs> cocktails and all that nonsense. He did, he did. All right? He's old. And there's a couple other guys who are kind of on the old side of uh, the football um, age, I guess, the limit. Yeah. You know, the, all the side of 35, a couple of free agent wide receivers who uh, didn't play really. One of them didn't play in the league last year. One of them actually played in the league, but you really wouldn't know it too much. And we're talking about Randy Moss and Terrell Owens. Yeah. Are these guys going anywhere? What do you think? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I think the, the baggage factor on both of them, um, the truth is, is there's actually less baggage on Moss because he... He's just a, more of a me guy, but he's not so cancerous amongst the team. Like, teammates actually like Randy Moss. When he's there, yeah, I guess, but he's pulled up such stupid things in his life, like, you know, jumping in front of the police car or whatever it was, and, um... Straight cash home. Yeah, straight, yeah, you know, <laughs> squirting with the body. He, 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 has, a, with the, yeah, he has a bit of model citizen, Scott. Let's not kid ourselves. For the record, for the record and I don't condone what he did, because I'm definitely one for sportsmanship. The thing with the water bottle squirting the ref was actually kind of amusing. I, I, I'm I'd not be, saying it wasn't. I'd be lying if I if I didn't say I left. Now the moon, the fake mooning thing to, in Green Bay, that was that was that was a little over the top. Yeah, he does some silly things, and you know, not that Owens is like you know, you know, the model citizen either. He's not Mr. Perfect or anything like that. But if anything, I think that he hasn't been the one who's gotten into any outside trouble. It's been his mouth that's gotten him into more trouble than anything, as far as him with the me 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 sort of thing, and. He's definitely not liked by more teammates, I would say, than more. So I think you're right in that aspect where Randy Morse is more liked in his own locker room right. as opposed to Terrell Randy Owens. Randy loves him. Yeah, they got, well, God, he, sh man, he was, it was like he, like, lost a family member when he left there. When he, <laughs> yeah. he was so, i never seen a guy so upset. Right, right. You know, right. I mean, and it's so weird to see that. It's like when you go to New England, it's like you, you get transformed in some of you saw with Chad Ocho Stinko Johnson this year. I mean, he totally stuck up the joint, but he wasn't himself, obviously. He wasn't yeah. his outrageous self, and Randy Moore certainly wasn't that when he was in New England. So it's something about that place, I guess, that maybe makes you grow up a little bit. Yeah, not, not that I want to discuss him so much, but you know what was weird is I feel like Ocho Stinko, with all due respect, of course. I like you, bro. I'm just saying. You were yeah, bad. I year. actually liked his antics when he was in Cincinnati. I actually thought they had personality, and the No Fun League was definitely not cool with the way they treated that. That's a whole other story, but... He seemed to be like, um, like a, 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 a puppy dog in like a brand new world. Like he couldn't fit into New England. Yeah. Like it was some larger than life thing for him. Like you know, he was like a deer in headlights. It was very odd. Yeah. Seeing it, him like that. It, it seemed like he just wasn't really allowed to, you know, be Ocho Cinco. He was supposed to be, you know, Chad Johnson. That's what they wanted mm. him to be. And that's not how he excels. He's been a great wide receiver by being himself and by talking his trash and by sending teams packages of uh, Pepto-Bismol because he's going to make their stomach turn. <laughs> and he, you know, he lives up to his right. You know, the guy has always played well and then he gets to New England and everything changes. So, you know, sometimes it's for the better for some people. Randy Morse broke Jerry Rice's record, 23 touchdowns over there. Ocho Cinco had the worst year of his life. And so, that, that didn't actually cost New England the Super Bowl. I mean, or, and, and their season, because they didn't have the deep threat. Yeah, they didn't have the deep threat. They were supposed to be deep threat. But as, as far as T.O. and Randy Moss go, um, T.O. did a workout, which was bizarre, because nobody showed up. Weird, before. right? Nobody, I mean, how humbling is that? Yeah, I gotta tell you. Um, it, 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 kind of freaky. It's like he's on some like high school field or something, and nobody's even watching him, and it's just video cameras around of some media guys you don't even know. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, if you ask Donovan McNabb, you ask Steve Young... Um, I don't know. Jeff that, Garcia. Jeff Garcia. Um, I, I don't know that people want this guy on their team at this point. Um, but has, has he? But you see, he in Cincinnati he kept his mouth shut. Buffalo he kept his mouth shut, and he produced. He the produced, guy played but, well. But those teams weren't good. Then. You, you're right. Now that's the key factor. You. That's an excellent point. 
they weren't winning. Uh, Cincinnati had a terrible year last year. When he was on Buffalo, I, I'm not sure. They won maybe four or five games or whatever it was. Right. So, yes, definitely a good point. And we, when he was on Dallas, they weren't winning either. So, that says something, no doubt. When you have a player who's that great, and he was great because I'm a 49er fan, and I remember him coming into the league. And ironically enough, he had one my favorite 49er moment of all time involves him. And I despise him more than any other 49er, and it has to do with the, your the Packers yes. game. I 1998, the catch and cry was unbelievable. It, 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 whatever, I'm not going to get into it because it's the past, but that's when I, I'm like, all right, this guy is something else. And he was not just the best wide receiver, I think he was the best player in football for a good three to four year stretch, maybe him and Ladanian Tomlinson. That's how good he was. And I, I watched last year, he had almost 1,000 yards, he led the team in catches. You're right, they didn't win, but he can produce. So, can you find that balance with the winning and him producing? Well, that, that's a fact. I mean, can, can he get onto a team? Can, can the team that's actually primed to win, would, would they even want him? Mm -hmm. And then, if they did take him on, would they be able to win with him? I just don't know. Randy Moss, he went to the Titans... And vanished. Vanished, disappeared. Before that, he went to Minnesota and vanished. And it seemed like that would be a good fit with the whole Kenny Britt thing at the yeah. time. But he just vanished. Yeah, it was and, yeah. Um, weird. Very strange. But the thing is, is this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Owens is what, 38? Yeah, he's either 37 or 38. He's, Randy he's Moss is 35. You're right. He, he's Randy young. Moss may have something left in the tank. The problem is... You know, look at the, look at the Oakland situation. If mm -hmm. he, if, he, if he's not on a team that's going to be winning, he's going to be he's going to be a headache. That's correct. He's going to be a headache. That's exactly right. So I mean, I look at it as the, the only team that for me, in terms of Randy Moss being comes back, that makes any sense to go to would be back to the Patriots mm -hmm. because they want him. And he, right, do they want? You know, he would love to go back. He'd probably pay them to go back. At this point, <laughs> yeah, so, you might. know, with what's going on. Because you're right. There's not many teams that want him. Um, Thirty-five. You're right. That's. Not extremely old, but for a wide receiver, it's a bit older. But the thing with him, again, his game is built on speed. He's not a route runner. We all know that. He's go down the field, throw me the ball, and I'm going to catch it. So can he still do that? And so, no one's ever potentially done that better. Than probably not. He, probably just going down the field and pure jumping, catching ability, and athleticism. He's probably the best that has ever done it. Yeah. And it's sad because all you hear from guys is that he didn't have a good work ethic, and if he had a better work ethic, he could have been the best wide receiver of all time. That's what a lot of people say. And now you got his big brother, Chris Carter, kind of calling him out a little bit. What he had to, he had said basically, um, well, along the lines, you know, again, that he doesn't put his full effort in, and he could be kind of like, you know, a complainer or whatever. And I think he said he quit. I think he right, a quitter, right. Quitting, and then yeah. even more specifically, right, refer to him as a quitter, and... Moss came back at him a little bit, you know, kind of a little shot about the Hall of Fame not making it in, which was kind of childish. Which, which, well, while we're on that topic, um, let, what is the deal with the Hall of Fame? Um, I, I want to say in all sports, really, especially, well, baseball, that the writers, just, they're out of their minds. Mm -hmm. Like, how does someone not make it for, like, 12 years, and then... Right. Did he play in those twelve years? Yeah. And that was all of a sudden. What did he do? I mean, it, 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 mm -hmm. it it's ridiculous. I'm with you. But but going back to Chris Carter specifically, Chris, it, first of all, and the writers too with Bill Parcells. Parcells, how is Bill Parcells not in the Hall of Fame right now? Well, you hit the writers. You you hit it. The people who vote on the Hall of Fame are the guys in the media, and they're the people who have these quote unquote relationships with these players and coaches. And if they don't like you. They'll get you in and say, you know what, you're not getting in on the first ballot, and that's disgusting. But you know what I think? Because, and not that we're writers, or we might be considered media at some point. I don't know, I'm a great writer. But I am not qualified to say that this guy it shouldn't be in the Hall of Fame. The facts are, Chris Carter is a no doubt first ballot Hall of Famer, and so is Bill Parcells. Chris Carter is a, probably a top, one of the top five receivers that ever has walked the planet. Yeah. All he ever did was catch touchdowns. Mm -hmm. That's that was what he was known for. That and was if, his thing. if there's anyone qualified to, to have any conversation on that level with Randy Moss, it's Chris Carter. Sure. Plus he was his big brother in Minnesota, yeah. and he's not in the Hall of Fame. What is going on? Yeah, you're you're right with the Hall of Fame. It, it, yeah, it just what well, just one more point about that. It, you know, the, the the class this year, and I'm look. Uh, I used to play football. I love football, and I think the trench, the game is won and lost in the trenches. That being said, Cortez Kennedy. Made mm -hmm. the Hall of Fame, and Chris Carter didn't. Yeah, there's such, something reeks yeah. about that. It's to me. right. It's weird, and a part of that you can say because Cortez Kennedy played in Seattle, where it's like the dead zone up there, nobody knows anything or whatever. But I'm with you. When you think Hall of Fame, and you put Cortez Kennedy names Chris Carter, 
I would assume most people are going to say Chris Carter belongs in ahead of him. I'm not taking away from well, Cortez. 99% of the yeah. people would say Chris yeah. Carter's in, right? Right, and you don't mean to diminish anybody else, but the point is, how is your three years now, how is Chris Carter not in the Hall of Fame? Right. It's and, insane. And they try and spread out with the positions and whatnot, and, then, and Cortez Kennedy was, was a pretty... I'm not, I'm not even sure if he, was, if he is a Hall of Famer, in my opinion, but he was really good. Right. Good, but, good in, but in any case, if you have to think about it, maybe not. But Chris Carter is a no doubter. No doubter. No it's a no doubter. And so is Tim Brown, and so is Andre Reid, and they're not in either. And Bill Parcells. Bill, Bill Parcells, Parcells is one sure. of the best ever. Yep. And, and, and you can look at that as evidence of all his coaches that are around the league, from Sean Payton to Belichick to Coughlin. They're all disciples yeah. of, of, of Parcells, and, and Parcells isn't in. It, it's... It, it's my body. The only logical explanation, which is illogical in my opinion, is again the relationships that these writers and media members who vote on the Hall of Fame, the relationships they have with the players and coaches, and that's ultimately what keeps certain guys out. It's just we're like Burt Bly living in baseball. What took him so long to get in? Well, that was kind of the point I was making. Like, what was it, 12 years later? Yeah. He gets in. And I think he even had made a comment like, it was almost bittersweet, like like he, he didn't understand it either. Like he right. was obviously happy about it, but you know, and, and I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone, but it's like I just want to say to the media people out there, like, who do you think you are? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, really, you didn't play, or maybe you know, most of, most of them did not play ball. Your 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 vindictiveness mm -hmm. uh, and and spitefulness against these guys that maybe they didn't they, they didn't want to give you interviews because you badger them with insane questions. Right. Get over it. Right. Judge them on what they did on the field, and in some cases off the field, you know, that they were good, good citizens and so on and so forth, but, you know, it, 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 Bill Parcells and Chris Carter, get them in the Hall of Fame, right? I mean, yeah. come on. And come you on. know who else deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, and they will be there one day, they should be there, but there's the question, how long is it going to take for them to get in? Is Randy Moss and Terrell Owens? Mm. There's no doubt that these guys are Hall of Famers. You look at their numbers, you look at their play, you can't debate it. But given what we're talking about and that relationship status... It could take them until the very last year that they're eligible to get in because of their, you know, quote unquote, you know, demeanor and on, you know, on the field and again with the media and stuff. So while if you just take them from their play alone and their numbers alone, they're guaranteed first ballot Hall of Famers, Owens and Moss. They won't be. They guaranteed will not make it in the first. Yeah, ballot. I mean, and and I think Randy Moss will have a little bit easier route than Terrell Owens did because Terrell Owens seriously decimated a few teams. Yeah. I mean, look at that one. He decimated. He decimated your decimated team. Decimated. He decimated the 49ers. I mean, that was with, with Mariucci too, right? Yeah. Was, I mean, he got was, the whole team fired. Got the quarterback thrown out. It was a mess. And the situation in Philadelphia with McNabb. I mean, the fact that they didn't win that Super Bowl. Okay, they got beat that day. Um, but that team should have won a Super Bowl, and, and he blew it up. I mean, he just he blows right. up teams, and I, I think that's going to wear on him long, uh, a little bit more in terms of getting in the Hall of Fame. Randy Moss, I think, will have an easier route. But that being said, he, his antics have probably held him, are going to hold him back at some point, too, a little bit. Who would, if you're starting a team, both of them fresh, knowing what you know now, who would you rather have on your team, Owens and Moss? At their ages now? And no, 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 not right now. Just taking their whole career. And, you know, who would you who, who would you say I is think better? The, the better, better all-around receiver, I, I actually, this may be controversial, I don't even think it's a question, I think it's Terrell Owens. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Terrell Owens is a beast. A beast. He's a, he, he, like you said, in the 98, 99, he was a man-child. Mm -hmm. um, there's a few of them kind of lurking in, in the NFL now. But even th those, they're still not even up to what he was at his peak. Yeah, he, he was just incredible. Just incredible. You know, I actually held a single game record for catches. I think he's got you know, 22 catches in one game. He can, he, I remember the guy, and he can do it all. And as much as I didn't like him while he was playing for my team and other teams, I couldn't help but to sit there just in amazement. I remember him taking a reverse that he was supposed to actually pass. <laughs> in like 2003, he yeah. ends up taking it the other way and runs for a 50-yard touchdown. He, right. he did some amazing things, and you know they'll both be all the famous. But will either one of them play this year is the thing because they both want to. It's but it's public. They both want to come back. Who's going to take them? If if you're right, it doesn't make any sense for them to go to a team that doesn't have any chance to win. Right. It just doesn't. You're not going to take a risk like that, you know, if you're... So you're paying a lot of money, you're going to have a headache all year, and you're going to be right. losing. What, right. what would be the point? So you got to find it's somebody who can control them, a team who can win, a team who's ready. So you got both of them out there. I, it's very... At the sport profit that I am, it's hard for me to see. My vision is blurred right now on to where both of them are going to go if they do go anywhere. It, it, it's really tough. Um, your guess is as good as mine at this point. I mean, yeah, I... I like I said, I think based on age, I think that Randy Moss would have a better shot. That being said, his little 
spat with Chris Carter isn't going to bode well for because people are going to say, look, the guy hasn't changed. Who knows? Maybe that'll get him in quicker because obviously they don't like Chris Carter, so maybe Randy Moss the more he talks bad about him. Oh, maybe the whole thing, but I'm <laughs> saying get, getting him back on the team. Oh, okay. I, sure, I, sure. I don't know that he'll get back on the team now because it's like he, at some at some point, he's just got to zip it and go and, and be sincere and be... You know, just don't, just don't be a headache. Yeah, just and headache. that's that's what he's been. You know, I've never been a Moss fan or an Owens fan just because of their antics. They're antics. The diva factor is so great in yeah, these guys. It's unbelievable. Why, why can't you be like Larry Fitzgerald? That guy just goes out and plays ball, man. He shuts his mouth. He's a model citizen, model player. Teammates love him, and he produces. So Larry, I mean, if, if, if they all could be like Larry Fitzgerald. Right. Oh, if they all I'm could gonna... be like Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying like these. Please don't, no, please don't judge us. All right, I'm gonna cut that out. Abilities. Um, <laughs> what about Peyton Manning? What do you think's the story? Of it? Because Jim Irsay is just chatterbox. He's like a freaking parrot. This guy. Why can't he just shut up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, well, here, well, here's here's the hypocrisy of, of him not shutting up. Is didn't he say to Peyton Manning um, to not be a politician and yeah. to keep it in in, 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 house. in the horseshoe? That's right. The horseshoe that wait. Didn't, didn't Peyton Manning build that horseshoe? Yeah, he created They put every damn bolt in that thing. And, and so he, here, here's, here's what I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so Peyton Manning comes out because it's the writing is on the wall that, that they would, they're they going to take Andrew Luck. Maybe they take RG3. I think they're taking Andrew it Luck. It seems like it's Luck at this point. So he's halfway out the door. Uh, the writing is it, the writing's on the wall. And so, he, so Peyton Manning comes out and he says... I'd go play for another team and give them an incentive-based contract based on the health situation and all that. Mm -hmm. But when you sign a contract, and I know they're not guaranteed in it, the contracts aren't guaranteed in the NFL, the fact is, it, it's an agreement. It, 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 it's a handshake. And for a guy who's done so much for your, for your city, to now say you welcome him back, which I don't even know what capacity. Does that mean he's a welcome back and he's going to be back up to, you know, to Andrew right. Luck? It, what it seems like, it seems like his underlying... Statement is is that he's saying yeah we would welcome Peyton back as long as he's willing to basically cut his salary by a whole bunch and right. you know maybe tutor Andrew Luck for the upcoming year afterwards. Right. That's the thing. Now it's been, again over the past couple three weeks it's become, it's become such a build up. Now it's just you know that they're going to part ways. There's no way Peyton Manning is going to wear a Colts uniform next year one way or another. So why not sit down, get it over with. Figure out your departure, however it's going to be, and move on and let this guy find another place to play, or whatever it is. And, and well, that, 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 that's another fu funny aspect of it, is, is now he's saying that Peyton Manning is going to dictate where he goes? No, he's not. Right. That never happens. Mm -hmm. that, in, in the NBA, that happens. Yeah. But, the, the, the unless, situation, unless Peyton's released. Unless he's released. Yeah. But if, if he's still under contract because he's still owed a lot of money by Ursay, an agreement, by the way, that was signed, I think, less than 12 months ago... Which is crazy that within one year, you can go, because of an injury, you yep. can go from being, I mean, what was he there, 14 years. Yep. He took that, for what, his rookie year is 115, I think was the record. Yeah, they were a bad team. They were from like 3 and 13. 115 to a perennial powerhouse, he built the horseshoe. He, you have an agreement that pays guy a lot of money, which, you know what, for his legacy, he's worth the money. You should just give it to him. Even if he leaves, they should still give him the money, as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. But... Now, because he's telling other teams to do it incentively, then you think it's okay to break your agreement? Yeah. I, 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 I then that's the thing that people need to realize about the contract, especially in the NFL. That, like, as you said, they're not guaranteed. So, take it from another side. When a player holds out, don't always look at him and say, oh, that guy's such a jerk. He's not a good teammate. He's holding. You know what? Contracts aren't guaranteed, and your lifespan in the NFL is this small, this short. All right, so you get what you can when you can get it, and it can be over like that. Right, and you can be and cut like that. That's I mean, the point. And it can be over. I mean, not even just over um, from from a football standpoint. I mean, health wise, health wise, like the significant injury, especially from a quarterback of all people. Um, it's, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, well, yeah. You, you can't always hop on the players in the NBA with the money. Maybe you hop on the players a little in in, in, in Major League Baseball. Maybe yeah, baseball. Because, forget it because those those contracts are guaranteed. Yeah. But in the NFL, it's such a violent, physical sport, mm -hmm. although they are trying to, hopefully you'll forgive the term, they're trying to pussify the sport a little, <laughs> little, little bit too much. That's um, fine, okay. The, 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 it's it, not fine. I mean, look, I'll tell you what it is. I want them to do that because I, I'd rather watch guys like Peyton Manning and Tom Brady and Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees as opposed to Shane Falco, Tyler Palco, whatever. 
Glauco named that guy was in Kansas City and people like that. I don't want to watch Skeletor Skelton in Arizona. I don't want to watch the Reds. I don't want my quarterbacks healthy because they make the game better. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see a 9-6 to game where your field goal kicker is your star. So I want the quarterback protected. Now, these accidental helmet to helmet things are a whole other story. That's really more what I was referring yeah, to. Yeah, that, that I have a problem with. You, that, got, you got to let the defenders defend, otherwise, take the shoulder pads and the helmets off and let them play two hand touch. Oh, really? I mean, yeah. and, that, and, and part of the problem, too, is that's part of the allure of the sport, is the, the gladiator ness of, of, it, of it all. You know? People it's, love that. People yeah. love watching those collisions and battles because we're not the ones getting hit. Right. We and, like to see it. And, and you know what else, too? And I don't want to go off on a philosophical tangent here. You know, the way people are raising kids now, everyone's a winner, no one loses. Right. You know, which is, which is, it's just, it's just bad business. You have to learn to lose. I mean, exactly. But in terms of football, injury is a part of the game. You're not going to be able to out, out rule everything mm -hmm. where injuries aren't going to happen. They're still going to happen by how many rules they change. Are concussions an issue? Absolutely. Um, the guys who are intentionally hitting people with their heads should get a penalty. Sure. But the ones that are accidental and like it's a shoulder pad situation and the flag comes out almost instantly. Right. That bothers me. When a running back puts his head down to gain a few extra yards and at the same time the defender's putting his head down to try to tackle him, it's an accident. Yeah. You cannot flag somebody for that. And I know it's hard. The, it's a high speed, too. Yeah. I mean, the guys move at high speed. The league regulates. They want them to throw the flags on any helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, and it's hard for a referee to differentiate just like that and, you know, make a human judgment on, oh, okay, you know, that was an accident or he meant to do that. But when the fines come later and James Harrison is getting fined for, like, every single helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact that he has, that's when I get a little upset. If, if it's a penalty during the game, I understand because it's hard on the referee to make that judgment call right there and then, but... Don't fine a guy $75,000 because the running back happened to put his head down the same time the defender did. Right. Oh, that, that bothers me. Yeah, you. yeah. I mean, it, you it, know? It, it's wrong. And it, it goes back to what we were just saying, too, is these, these contracts aren't guaranteed. Their lifespan can be so short. And, and look, if, if, you need to, if you need to find someone because they legitimately tried to hurt someone in, in an unhealthy fashion, okay. But yeah, if, if, if the, guy, the guy's head goes down because he's trying to get out of the way, and it just so happens because the speed they're going at, he gets hit in the head, and you find the guy $75,000 worth, I mean, that, that's, that, that's crazy. That, that's ridiculous. I mean, 75000 where I, is the money going, anyway? Does that go to the league? It, for, I, you got me, because it's definitely not going to my pocket. If you're going to take it from him, maybe at least give it to charity. Do something good with it rather than take so. it and stick it in your own pocket. At least I hope that's where it goes to some sort of... And I, I've heard that that's what they do. They, they give to their specific charities or whatever. So I hope so. Yeah, I, mean, I don't uh, know, man. It's hard to... You know, it's a little fun league, so yeah, who knows? Yeah, who I'm knows? not in the IRS, so I, I really don't know. <laughs> Tax season is coming up, so maybe we should give him a call and uh, have Goodell checked out. <laughs> yeah, maybe. With his, with his $20 million a year salary. Yeah, right? well, Boy, he's, he's happy, but the players aren't. The players do not like this guy. It, it's no. amazing. They, he's just not a well-liked guy from the player's standpoint. No, I mean, t and, and a $20 million a year salary for what exactly? Yeah, you, nobody should get paid more than the president. That's my opinion. Yeah. All right? <laughs> yeah. This man runs the country, and you play football, and you're making 50 times more than he is? I'm sorry. That doesn't sound And football is so big now. I mean, it... it we, we could do a debate on, is Roger Goodell more powerful than Barack Obama? I mean, we could yeah. actually have that debate. Yeah, it seems, I wonder who would get more Twitter hits, like, you know, more se Twitter followers. 75,000 for, for you, 25,000 for you, yeah. you hit the guy b below his knees, you're going to get another uh, 15 grand. I mean, right. what, are do? what are we yeah. doing here? Yeah, $75,000, that's like, um, I don't know, maybe like a half a year salary for the president. Yeah. Something like that. And the press don't make too much money. They make like two hundred and fifty thousand. Yeah, 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 they don't make yeah, that much money. Yeah. You know, James Harrison gets fined that a year. <laughs> it's incredible stuff. And you know what? I mean, look, he he, he has to be, be the man in the situation. Just deal with it. Yeah, I'm not absolving him either. Just yeah, for the right. yeah, yeah, and same here. But you know what? Like, I, I understand his gripe. He just needs to the, the gripe needs to be held kept in house a little bit more. But I understand his gripe. It's like he's gotten to a point where there's like a target on him. Absolutely. Oh, no doubt. No I mean, doubt. He, he, he's you know what he's gonna have to do. He's got to run to the quarterback and like. Yeah, really. Yeah. Just, right, right. just blow at him yeah. and see if they go down. Exactly. You know, pull, pull their shoelace. Yeah, eventually, they're gonna change the rules, but you're not gonna have to tackle the quarterback at some point. You're just gonna have to have him in your grasp, and that's gonna be it. They should throw the red, the red practice jerseys on the quarterbacks now. Might as well. You, might, yeah. like, I'm, you know what? I'm cool with. It. Like I said, I want my quarterbacks to play anyway, so I'm fine with it. But <laughs> hey, whatever. I'm with you. You know, we're gonna gonna wrap it up for now. All right, we gave you our NFL breakdown. Morse, Owens. We'll see where they go, if they go, what's gonna happen. Hall of Fame talk, all that stuff. For the record, we both. 
are on board. Chris Carter, I don't know how you guys are leaving him out. Bill Parcells, too. These guys are ambassadors of the game and have been. Wake up, all right, you Hall of Fame people. Stop, you know, with your little gripes and get over it. Anything else you want to say to the children out there before we go? I just want to say I'd love to see Peyton in Arizona. I want to, oh. see, I want to see him throw the Larry Fitzgerald. I, you know what? I take that back. Don't say anything because I'm a Niner fan. I don't want to <laughs> say anything. All right? You just put a muzzle on you with the end of the show. It was kind of like an intentional pull. It was an intentional pull. <laughs> all right. We're out of here, guys. Thanks for hanging with us, and we'll see you later. Penn City. Peace.